Greetings from Dystopia, episode 163. 163. <laughs> More on food. <laughs> I had to laugh. Um, yesterday, my oldest brother comments on C rats, K rats, or MREs. Um, I've been known to carry MREs, that's for sure. Do I want to carry MREs? Probably not. Um, a, they're heavy. B, they produce a lot of waste. I'm not saying they're not tasty because some of them are damn good. Um, and <coughs> quite frankly, I don't want to be constipated on the trail. <laughs> I don't know if you've eaten MREs or not, but yeah. <laughs> Some of those can uh, stop you up pretty good. Um, Chris got back to me for his questions that I answered. He um, is a shift worker and he's working the next three nights. So he needs to be, be able to sit down and watch the, the last couple of videos. So that's fine. We'll follow up with cookware if necessary or um, methods of cooking. Like I've said before, this is kind of up to you guys. You know, your questions drive the channel. So if you got them, post them up. <laughs> Comment and subscribe as well, please. The um, So yesterday I was talking about just the various freeze-dried and dehydrated meals. And there was a direct message from the Facebook page asking about calorie intake. So I think I bumped the mic just then. I can't speak to your calorie intake. You know, each person is slightly different. We all need, you know, that 1,500, 2,000 a day on the trail. Sometimes more if you're under a lot of high exertion. We'll say snowshoeing or something like that. Or a lot of uphill. You have to learn your body. You have to know what you need in calories. I'm not saying you need to be an athlete and know that you have to so many grams of carbohydrates, so many grams of protein. You know your basic daily needs. Think about that. Increase it appropriately. Um, you won't get fat on the trail. Well, I don't know. I think so. Some people I've met along the way on various trails probably could. I'm going over to check out a new area, so I have to make sure I keep my eye on the map here. But um, I met one dude on the trail years ago that uh, this was doing the AT. He literally just went from town to town and spent a few days in each town and uh, basically did a pub crawl all the way up to AT and it was obvious the next time I saw him he was he was looking rough but uh, definitely not missing meals obviously you don't want to stand uh, you don't want to for an extended period of time eat freeze dried meals you need fresh fruits fresh vegetables and proper meat proper proteins <laughs> not everybody eats meat and that was another comment on the vegan versus vegetarian meals the other day too somebody commented they thought that I was vegetarian I was for quite a few years um, so yeah I, it's not that I'm afraid of vegan or vegetarian food it's just I'm aware of what you know the body needs for fuel and long-term hikes, you need to make sure that you're properly fueled. Um, I don't necessarily think a full vegan diet would pr provide the necessary fuel. I don't know. I'm not a food scientist. I'm not a nutritionist. It just seems to me that that would... So I have to go straight. Um, that would add to it. I was thinking about going and doing the one portion of the INM here 
in Romeoville. But as I look at the weather, I have a slightly larger break uh, between the rains. So I'm going to go try this preserve just Easter here. It's just a couple miles, but just looking, always looking for somewhere new to go, you know, some varieties. And so I got three tenths of a mile, so this is probably it up here. So yeah, just be aware of what your protein your protein requirements are, your carbohydrates are. You can go blind, but like a lot of kids that I met over the years on the AT, you stand a good chance of making yourself sick by not eating properly. So make sure you keep your nutrition in mind. <coughs> can you bring fresh food? That's where I needed to turn. That's kind of odd. Yeah, absolutely, you can bring fresh food on the trail, fresh fruit and vegetable. You have to look at weight. You have to look at the amount can you bring in. There are other things you could potentially do. This is like down in neighborhood. <laughs> All right, but yeah, there are, you could forage your way. Um, springtime why not there's tons of edible plants don't do it unless you know what you're doing <laughs> I've talked about that before especially like me with mushrooms mm. I love them but there's no way in hell I would try to forage my way up a trail by picking mushrooms I would probably kill myself within 10 miles or at least go on one hell of a trip ah okay I see this is not what I thought it was going to be for a preserve all right, let me come back to you guys. All right, yay, now the sun comes out. Uh, <laughs> got a little wet walking, but not bad. Um, just had a funny one here at this corner. I don't know why I thought this was a through fair and I had the stop sign, you know? So I'm sitting there and suddenly this guy stops and suddenly this guy stops. And I sat there for probably another 10 seconds or so. <laughs> and then when I look and the guy's waving, I'm like, oh, crap. It's a three-way stop. <laughs> I just completely missed the fact that it was a three-way stop. Um, so, yeah, that preserve was pretty much nothing. Um, I could not actually get into the preserve it's a uh, I don't know what you want to call it standalone preserve with no parking areas nothing like that so yeah it was a bit of a bummer but I'll get back over there and check that one out it is a continuation of Spring Creek not to be confused with Spring Hole Creek it's another little creek that runs through Lockport, Joliet, and then, best of my knowledge, it actually ends at the INM Canal in Joliet. But um, it's another good one for creek chubs, which is kind of why I was wanting to get back over into that preserve. But that may be a, I'm going to have to drop you off or something or get a ride, you know. <coughs> but I went and found another place to walk. Let's see. I'm actually now chasing up towards the INM again. So I'm doing a little bit of blue lining, chasing a small, what's essentially a high water drainage from this residential area I'm at. Runs down, hits Spring Creek, and then eventually feeds into the INM as well. So I'm just looking to see if there's any pools, puddles that are still part of the creek before it hits the I&M. And no, I see the I&M in front of me. Oh, I want to go that way. Almost took the long way to the house. Uh, funny I remember coming to Lockport this town here when I was a kid but 
hadn't been back through so I don't know a lot of the areas here so it's just kind of easing along sometimes you know you always know a one way street only goes this way so sometimes it's just weaving your way through the streets to get where you want to go Lockport is another one of those great little towns that formed up along the I&M and then along the railway and it's you know, thanks to industry, it's still up and around. And I know it's like Joliet. It's had its ups and downs over the years. But there's a lot of charm in these old towns. I'll give you a quick spin around. A lot of these old historic buildings in town here are just flipping amazing. Especially the old quarried stone. And we've been down here before on videos down the road. And I did some time lapses right over here on the INM, the light play over the canal, which sadly this little camera doesn't pick up too well, but the canal looks nice today, plenty of water, it's nice and clear for once, it's gotten pretty bad there for a while, even Jim, my buddy Jim was commenting on the videos how the canal was looking pretty ruddy in some spots, but so now we're going to cross over the, what is this one? The Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. So this is one of those deals where I wish I had a wider lens on this. So we're now over that. Across the INM, we're crossing that. And in just a second, we're going to be going over the Des Plaines River. Uh, this is an area I'd love to be able to get down and walk. Just to wade out there. Tons of great, uh, great egrets out there. Especially now, the migratory birds are going to start coming through again, so it's going to start getting really pretty. All right. Anyway, <laughs> enough on that. Just back to what I said earlier. If you guys have comments, by all means, message me via the page or you know, comment down below with any questions. I don't have a problem answering them had a request today to make bread <laughs> so I will do a quick video here coming up probably this week um, on how to make a pot bowl um, the easiest way is no need bread a lot of you guys know of it but you've never done it and I've had several requests to actually make videos about it a while back and just got another one today so I'll go up in the kitchen and walk you through it it's stupid simple and it's probably one of the best loaves of bread you'll ever have in your life if you are a fan of European rustic breads um, it's hard to beat a pot bowl we'll do that coming up this week um, probably bake a few extra loaves and I think that's about it for today good short video today no need to drive you nuts like I said it was raining when I went for my walk so <laughs> not going to take my camera out in the rain debate on buying a camera bag camera operable camera bag for the DSLR for rainy days probably worth the money I know there's some that aren't terribly expensive so anyways that's it for today guys be good be well Mask when necessary. Think smart. <laughs> Be mighty. Stay strong. My daughter got the kick out of that one. So I turned around to Mary Chapin Carpenter, and now it's like, did you have you ever heard this song? Have you ever heard that song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. -bye. You know all that when I came out, got back in the van. I was like, man, a cup of coffee would be nice right now. Forgot I had coffee in my purse. <laughs>